Hello, and welcome to this Hearts of Iron 4 modding tutorial. Today, we will talk you through more advanced scripting features and graphical features. This includes on actions, flags, scripted triggers, cosmetic tags, text icons, scripted effects, and animated art. In this tutorial, we will create an event and a decision which will make use of these features to add a narrative that changes our custom country from a republic into a constitutional monarchy. If you are following this tutorial series step by step, start by creating a new triggered only event and a new one-time decision in our country's custom decision category. On actions are blocks of script that act as triggers that execute effects when certain actions occur in game. On actions can be found under the game's common slash on underscore actions folder. Some examples of on actions are on startup for effects that trigger when the game starts up, on daily, on weekly, and on monthly, effects that trigger at the start of each day, week, or month in game. You can also add the country tag to the end of these to scope the on action to a specific country. On war and on peace for when a country enters war or returns to peace. On new term election for effects that trigger when an election happens, this is useful for election events. On puppet for when a puppet or subject nation is created in a peace conference. For a full list of on actions, you can look through the vanilla game's files to find these effects, or you can go to the Hearts of Iron 4 wiki on actions page. To make an on action file, create a file under your mod's common slash on actions folder, then in that file, create an on actions block. Inside the on actions block, we need to define what on action triggers the effects. In this example, we will create an action block that triggers an event on startup for our custom nation. To start in the on action block, create an on startup block. Then inside the on startup block, create an effect block. Every on action block needs an effect block around each effect that can trigger from that on action. Alternatively, you can use a random events block in which you can add weighted random events. In this example, we want one specific event we will just use an effect block. Next, we want to scope the effect to our country. Enter our country's tag as a scope block. Then inside the scope block, we will use the country event effects to trigger our event. Press save and start the game as our nation. As you can see when we load it into the game, the new event appears instantly, and it only appears for our custom nation. On actions are a powerful tool that will allow you to solve a number of issues you might encounter when creating more complex mods, as well as providing more precise triggers to any effects you may want to fire. Flags. Flags are custom values that can be either true or false and are commonly used in trigger blocks to inform the game if a custom condition has been met. There are five types of flags in game. Global is set for the world and can be read anywhere regardless of scope. Country for individual countries, state, for individual states, character, for individual characters, military industrial organizations, for individual MIOs. Flags are represented by custom text names. The text can be anything you wish, but we recommend making it short, easy to read, and descriptive of what that flag represents. In this example, we will use the king has returned. In this tutorial, we will focus on country flags, but the same principles apply to all types of flags. We will set our country flag in one of the options on the startup event. We will then use this as a trigger to allow a decision to be taken. To do this, first we go into the event, and in the event options, we set the country flag with set country flag equals the king has returned. This means when this event option is taken, the flag will be set to the nation that is the current scope, defaulting to the root nation the event has fired for. Flags can also be localized. This is important when having flags and triggers that are also visible to the player. Now let's add a localization string for our flag in one of our localization files. Add the flag name, then a colon, then the text localization that we wanted to read. Now let's use the flag. Here is a decision created earlier that we want to be available for the player to take if the country flag has been set. To do this in the available block, we will use the has country flag trigger equals then our flag's name. Now if we load into the game, we can see on the startup event that our country flag has been set. However, it is important to note that we will not see any messages saying the flag has been set. These are always hidden. If we open our decision window, we can see that we cannot take the decision because the flag is currently false, 
meaning we do not have the country flag. If we click on the option that adds the country flag, we can now see that we can take the decision because the flag has been set. If you want to see what flags are currently applied to the current country in-game, you can use the list flags command in the in-game console. Open the console, then enter list underscore flags. You can now see all the global and country flags currently applied to our nation. If you select a state and use the list flags command, you will also see all state flags affecting that state. Alternatively, you can see the flags affecting different countries by opening the country's diplomatic window and using the same command. Finally, if you want to remove a country flag in the script, you can do so using the CLR underscore country underscore flag effect. Scripted triggers. When modding Hearts of Iron 4, you might find yourself creating complex triggers for specific conditions. These triggers could then also be required in multiple places. Instead of copy and pasting the same complex set of triggers between each area as it is needed, you can instead create a scripted trigger. A scripted trigger is simply a set of triggers that are defined within a scripted trigger block. When you want to use the trigger, you can just call the name of the scripted trigger. This works in a similar way to functions or methods in traditional programming. Scripted triggers are located in the common slash scripted triggers folder. An example of a useful scripted trigger in the vanilla game files is the has same ideology scripted trigger. This one, which can be found in the file 00 underscore scripted underscore triggers dot text, checks to see if the root nation and the nation the trigger is scoped to has the same ideology. If it does, then it will return true. Otherwise, it will return false. In this example, we will create a scripted trigger that triggers if the nation has the country flag we created previously and the nation is democratic. First, under your mod's common folder, create a scripted underscore triggers folder. Then create a scripted triggers text file for your mod. Open the text file. To create a scripted trigger, start by writing the scripted trigger name. In this example, it will be can crown democratic king. Then enter the trigger conditions. In this case, we'll use the has country flag for the flag we have made previously, and then has government equals democratic to check to see if you are democratic. Now, let's use the scripted trigger. Return to the decision and replace the contents of the available block with can crown democratic king equals yes. This means that when all the content of the scripted trigger returns true, then we can take the decision. Alternatively, if you place no after the equal sign, then the decision will be available when all triggers return false. If we look at our decision in game now, we can see both triggers are required for the decision to be taken. Cosmetic tags. Cosmetic tags are skin that you put over an existing country to change its name, flag, and map color. Examples of this are seen throughout the game. For example, the United Kingdom changing its name to England if it loses Wales and Scotland, and America's flag gaining extra stars if it incorporates Hawaii and Alaska. For a country to use a cosmetic tag, first you must use the set cosmetic tag effect. Let's add this to our decision in the complete effect. Write the effect command followed by the name of the cosmetic tag. In this example, it will be set cosmetic tag equals MFC monarchy. On its own, this command will have no effect. However, you can now use the cosmetic tag name to change the country's name, flag, and map color. To change the country's color, you need to use the cosmetic text file located under the common slash countries folder of the vanilla game files. This file works in the exact same way as the color.txt file as discussed in the video on creating a country. There can only be one cosmetic.txt file, meaning that you need to keep it up to date with any changes made in patches for the vanilla game. Copy the cosmetics.txt file from the Hearts of Iron 4 vanilla game folder to your mod's common slash countries folder, then open it and scroll to the bottom. To add a color for our cosmetic tag, simply type in the cosmetic tag name followed by the color using the same format as the other colors defined in the file. In this example, we will use the RGB values for a light blue color. To change the country's name, simply use the cosmetic tag name instead of the normal tag name when defining the country name in the localization files. If we open the localization file where our country's names are defined, we can add our new cosmetic tags in this manner. For example, MFC Monarchy Democratic colon Kingdom of My First Year. Finally, let's add a new flag for our nation. To do this, simply start the flag's name with the cosmetic tag's name instead of the normal tag name. You can see in this example here, we have created a new flag file called MFC Monarchy.tga. 
Now we can see these changes in game. Start the game as our country and go to the decisions. As you can see, when we hover over the decision, it says that our country will change its name. If we click on the decision, we can see that our flag and map color has also changed to match the flag and map color we set for the cosmetic tag. Text icons. Text icons are icons that are used in localization text. These often are used to show the cost of certain actions or to add clarity in tooltips for game concepts. The full list of text icons are defined in the textIcons.gfx file under the interface folder. In this example, we will change our decision to have a cost of 1 convoy and 10 political power and use text icons to show that cost. First, we will update the decision by adding a custom cost trigger. These are used to add custom costs to a decision. Create the custom cost trigger block, then in the triggers check to see if the country has political power greater than 10. Then use a has equipment trigger to check to see if they have more than zero convoys. Next, add a custom cost text line. This will point towards the localization string using the key we defined and use the localization string for the cost that is displayed on the decision. In this example, we will use the key has one convoy 10 political power. Finally, in the complete effect, we have to add an effect that removes one convoy and 10 political power from that nation. To do this, start by using a hidden effect block. A hidden effect block is used to hide the effects from the player. Inside the hidden effect block, we will then remove the political power and the convoy used as the cost. Do this by adding the line add political power equals negative 10 and an add equipment to stockpile effect where we will subtract one convoy from the stockpile. Now that the decision is ready, we can go and add our text icons. Enter the key we defined as the custom cost text into the localization file. Then in the quotation marks after the key, we will use the convoy text icon. This is done by typing the pound sign followed by the name of the graphic file we wish to use. In this case, it is gfx underscore convoy underscore text icon. Then press space and enter the number one for one convoy. We will repeat this for the political power cost. Type another pound sign, then gfx underscore paul underscore power, then press space and enter the number 10. When using the custom cost text strings, you also need to add a blocked version of the string. This is what appears on the decision when it is unable to be taken. In this example, we will copy the localization string we just made, then add the word blocked at the end of the localization key. Now we can load the game and view our text icons. Scripted effects. Scripted effects work in the same way as scripted triggers. They are a set of effects that are grouped together for easy reuse in multiple places. You can find them under the common slash scripted effects folder. Let's move the effect we just made to remove 10 political power and one convoy from our decision and into its own scripted effect block. This way we can easily reuse the same effect in multiple decisions. Start by making a scripted effects folder under your mod's common folder. Then create a new text file for your mod's scripted effects. Open the file. Now, just like the scripted effects, let's create the scripted effect block. We will call this block remove one convoy 10 political power. Now move the effects from our decision to be inside the scripted effect block. Now in our decision, we add the name of our scripted effect block followed by equals yes. This is all you have to do to use scripted effects. Animated art. All the art and graphics we have added to our mod so far have been static images. However, we can also add animated art. In vanilla, these are most often used for interface icons. However, animated art can be used throughout the game in place of static art. To make animated art, you first need to have a piece of art that can be animated. This is done by having each frame of the animation adjacent to the previous frame in a single image file. In this example here, we have a new portrait that we will turn into an animated portrait. There are two frames to this animated portrait. The first frame is the left half of the image, and the second frame is the right half. To implement the animated art in game, we need to define its sprite type just like with static art. However, instead of a sprite type block, we will instead use the frame animated sprite type block. Create this now in an interface GFX file. The first thing we need to define in our frame animated sprite type is the name of the sprite and the texture file, just like with normal sprite types. Next, we need to tell the game how many frames of animation there are. 
do this by typing no of frames equals two for our two frames. The game will use this to automatically divide the image into two pieces and use each piece as a frame of the animation. If you have more than two frames, then it will divide the image by the amount specified. Next, we will say how fast we want the animation to play. This is done with the line animation rate FPS equals one, where the number is the number of frames per second that are played. Next, we add looping equals yes to tell the animation to constantly loop. Then play on show equals yes to tell the animation to automatically play when it is visible. Now we can add pause on loop equals 0.0. .0. This will mean that there will be no pause in the animation each time it loops. If you want it to pause, you can change the number here for how long you would like it to pause in seconds. Finally, we need to add always transparent equals yes. This means that any transparent parts of the image as defined by the image's alpha channels are treated as transparent and not part of the image in game. We can now add this animated portrait to a new character, just like with the static portraits. Here in the decisions complete effect, I have added an effect that will make the new character the country leader if we take the decision. When we load into the game and take the decision, we can now see that the new character is our country's leader and their portrait is now animated, changing every one second. That is all for today. Thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again in the next Hearts of Iron 4 modding tutorial.